This is As the World Burns, tying polls, prediction markets, and forecasting into current affairs and news. I'm your host, Randall Burns. Today we're talking about the twin pandemics and the U.S. investor community and what this means to you and what just might be done to improve the situation both for yourself and for others. Okay, now it's no secret that the lion's share of deaths has been among older Americans and the dominant corporate narrative has been, well, old people aren't really customers, they aren't really producing much, why worry about it? But there is an important area in which these over 55 people truly dominate. And that relates to investment, the lifeblood of the U.S. economy. The bottom line is these are the folks that, you, that corporate America goes to when they want money for projects. Now, investors are not a cross-section of America. They tend to be not only older, they tend to be, you know, have, be higher income. They tend to be concentrated in some of the more well-to-do and higher developed they also tend to be uh, wider, is, is well documented. One thing that's a little bit beyond the scope of what the material I have, they tend not to be a ethnic cross-section of white America. They tend to be uh, Scots, uh, people of uh, Russian and Jewish descent, uh, Dutch people, some specific uh, religious groups like Episcopalians and Presbyterians, you know, tend to just be disproportionately represented in the U.S. investor community. So, you know, take this with that in mind. There are other ethnic groups that are disproportionately affected by the pandemic. Those include indigenous Americans. Uh, so there, there are going to be pockets here. Now, one important stat I do not yet have is how this relates to long COVID. It's very possible that the investor community may have a be affected more by long COVID than uh, certain other communities. And long COVID, if you look at this study, it appears to be a lot more serious than is generally being acknowledged right now. My back of the envelope calculation shows like roughly equivalent to people picking up a two pack a day smoking habit late in life. For a 60 year old man, that means it basically triples his mortality from 1% to 3% on average. This is non-trivial. And this gets worse with repeated infections and, and, and doesn't show any sign of, of, of waning, right? Okay, right now, these, these re we aren't even really tracking well these repeated infections. In fact, we're not really tracking overall infections very well, okay? We need a better uniform metric like wastewater testing would provide, and we just don't have it yet. And there are real problems that this population has, which are going to be exacerbated and are not People don't widely understand that when this happens, that it's not just something that, that happened, it, that, that, that COVID-19 may well have exacerbated the condition, even if it was asymptomatic or very mild. There are huge unknowns here, and they're still emerging. And then we add into this equation monkeypox, which we are still learning about. It appears to be a lot more intransigent. intransigent. It has some oddities in how it spread that are simply not well understood at the time of this article and, and at the time of this uh, video. Now, the older U.S. investor community is near universally vaccinated against smallpox, which may help a little bit here, but we are still seeing what's happening emerging there. Now, the corporate America strategy on this one is, I think, kind of brain dead. Uh, for example, we have Norwegian uh, cruise lines, which are catering largely to older people and people that would be also prone to be investors, scrapping their, uh, their COVID testing strategy in parts already, instead of beefing it up, which I consider to be uh, just insane. Killing your customers is not a sound business strategy. It just is not. And I think that it may well be shown that there are products like cruises, like Fox News that contribute to all-cause mortality in their users and their customers. The airline strategies have been especially brain dead. They're asking for reduction of mitigations instead of some improved mitigations I'll go into in just a little bit. This is, it's, it's insane. 
okay? They are making flying more dangerous rather than safer. And one of the leaders of this charge has been the CEO of Delta, Ed Bastiat, who's a bean counter. He has no public health knowledge. As far as I know, he's not really consulting with anybody with real public health knowledge or, an, or analytical ability or real planning ability. And you see this backed up in the statistics on flight. It's actually becoming more dangerous rather than safer to fly in commercial aircrafts in the United States. This graphic is from an article on a study by an MIT researcher showing just that very recent article. And you have to ask yourself, how are these folks going to be greeted by an investor community that have had their friends and loved ones dying? Are the widows of the people that die going to be inclined to invest in the types of products and media that help contribute to the death? Or are the people that are dealing with long COVID going to be inclined? You know, people that are dealing with ongoing and chronic health problems as a result. What are they going to be inclined to do? This is an important question in today's investor climate. Now, I would argue that we're seeing short-term desperation moves by people like the Delta CEO. And I, in fact, own put options as a result. I may be wrong. I believe what I say. I hold put options in Delta, in Norwegian Cruise Lines, and Fox News. Long-term, the economic health of airlines depends on containment of risks. And they should be lobbying hard for that, hard for research that will actually help them create a better product and maintain their business instead of just trying to shore up revenues the next quarter. Shareholders should demand the ousters of CEOs like Ed Bastian who are doing otherwise. They could be demanding uh, mitigations like wastewater testing in every airport to, and using those to guide mitigations like mask wearing. Uh, they have a problem with collect, you know, with disciplining people but wearing masks on airlines. That could be handled by cameras that enact small fines on all people in an airport. Uh, and it could be done automatically. So the, air, the airline staff who are not equipped to do that could be, would be relieved of that duty. You could have rapid antigen testing be required for all staff and passengers entering an airport. And there's room for improving vaccines. The, the graphic above shows a nasal vaccine that is truly blocking. This is essential to the economic health of airlines. And they don't seem to be really pushing for it very much, along with better antiviral drugs. And they're just not working on this that I can see, or at least not visibly. They need to be at the forefront. They need to be visible on this front instead of trying to sweep it visibly under the carpet like a spoiled child. There has been consumer data being collected, which is showing that the airlines are not doing the best of job in their air purification uh, in their planes. And they're not lobbying hard for the airports for improved ventilation, even though that can have a huge effect along with uh, improved purification via UVR. And they should be lobbying hard for that. They should be yanking the chain of their politicians hard to get this stuff in place, ASAP. And if they don't, I think we're going to see a retreat of investors into other areas, into work-at-home stocks, into stocks uh, that are commodity-oriented, that are less likely to be affected by the pandemic. And you know, st uh, stocks like uh, TDOC that are going to actually benefit from these trends. Public opinion in this area is not stabilized. There's no reason to think that investor opinion is either. This is from a, gap, from a recent series of Gallup polls on the topic, and it's all over the map and shows no sign of letting up. One thing that I've seen in my metaculous projections is I've, I, I have been among the more pessimistic people on there, and I've been consistently over-optimistic. And so, so I'm trying to correct on this in terms of my narrative on this video. I'm trying to be as accurate as I can be here. Monkeypox puts a whole new wrinkle on this, which is not well developed at the time of this, but it's going to be causing real fluctuations also for sure. So this is Randall Burns signing off. Thank you very much for joining me. Please like this video. Please up, upvote my videos. Um, Comments are welcome. Suggestions for huge episodes are especially welcome.